Hey, it's John from Smart Edition Nursing, and in today's video, we are gonna go over the science section of the T7 exam. We are gonna go over specifically all the topics that cover scientific reasoning. This is a good portion of the test. It is nine of the 50 scored questions on the test. So you're definitely gonna to need to know these topics, and you will want to make sure that you are studying the right thing so that you can do well on this section. Now, before I get into it, make sure you check out the links in the description below. There are links to our T7 free practice test, the Smart Edition Nursing T7 online course and our free study group on Facebook and those are all really really great resources so I want to make sure you guys take advantage of them. So for scientific tools this is going to be knowing what tools are best to use to measure uh, including glassware and scales. So for example, knowing the best type of glassware to use uh, for uh, never using beakers to measure liquids and the importance of using a graduated cylinder instead of a micro pipette. Um, knowing what meniscus convex and concave is and how they apply to getting an accurate measurement. Um, reviewing how to identify measurements in a diagram or a graph. Um, so for example, you might be shown a picture of a ruler and be asked to uh, measure something in the question. Uh, differences in types of scales. Uh, so you have like a triple beam and an electronic scale and when you might want to use one or the other. For scientific measurement, this is gonna be about understanding the metric system and knowing your conversions. So conversions need to be memorized. Your kilo, hecta, deca, meter, liter, gram, deci, centi, milli. These are all really important things and it's not just for the test. You are going to encounter this in your program going into the future. So it's not, it doesn't really make sense to skimp on it now. You'll be giving yourself a little bit of a head start to really get more familiar with the metric uh, system and knowing these conversions so you're going to run into it throughout nursing school so now's a good time to get ahead of the curve um, you'll want to know you know or just knowing why specific measurements are used and choosing the appropriate type of measurements you know in that vein centimeters is a, the appropriate measurement for the growth of a plant in a controlled experiment um, it's not appropriate for measuring the distance a runner ran in the day you would have a million uh, centimeters um, Solving word problems is gonna be a big part of this scientific measurement, and those are gonna require you to convert between systems. So, uh, you know, for example, you might see something asking you to convert liters to milliliters. So you will need to know these conversions. Um, so make sure you are totally on top of that. So let's take a quick look at a practice question. Uh, this says, is one of these word problems and it says a patient's weight is recorded as 70 kilograms. Convert his weight to pounds for a health record that uses the imperial system. So one, you need to understand the conversion factor, right? So one kilogram equals 2.20642 pounds, but let's say 2.2 pounds. So one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. So you set up the conversion, that's gonna be 70 kilograms times 2.2, and you can put the rest of the decimals, um, 70 kilograms times 2.2, uh, calculate the result, that comes out to 154.3234, uh, so 154 pounds. So the answer is 70 kilograms equals 154.32 pounds. And converting weight between kilograms and pounds is essential in, in international healthcare settings where it kind of different uh, measurements of units are used. So this is a really good practice question. You will see something similar to this on your test. Now you guys should all be pretty familiar with the scientific method. This is something we all saw in high school. You didn't get out of high school without at least going through the scientific method once. So this should be a refresher for you. But when it comes to the scientific method, what is it? Um, you need to know the steps and the definition of each step. Uh, the scientific method begins with a problem and ends with communicating findings and, and allowing others to verify those results. So knowing how scientists publish their work and how their work is uh, reviewed and verified. Um, so if, for example, uh, scientific journals, peer review. Um, and then there's inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Know the differences between those two types of reasoning. And this kind of goes right into designing an experiment. Uh, so when it comes to designing an experiment, we're needing to know how to do that, how to design an experiment. So knowing each part of an experiment, for example, you might encounter a question that describes an experiment and you might be asked to identify which part of the experiment is the independent variable or the control group. So you really need to have that down pad and be able to pick that right out of the question and know it pretty easily and be able to quickly do that. 
um, an independent variable, you know, it, the factor that is manipulated, the thing that we're changing to see what, how the result changes. Um, so like, um, you know, the, an example could be like water in seed germination. If you have it or don't have it, what happens? What's the end result? Um, then there's the dependent variable. That's the observed result. That's the seed in the seed germination that we're not changing anything. Um, and then there's controlled variables, uh, factors that are kept constant, things like uh, sunlight, temperature, soil conditions in the example of uh, seed germination. So that's designing an experiment. So for data analysis and interpretation, it is understanding and identifying the cause and effect. Uh, so for example, grams of sugar consumed and the level of insulin as a result. Understanding the sequence of events uh, and how they affect the conclusion. So this is very similar to the type of skills you'd be tested on on the, uh, on the T7 exam. Uh, how to draw logical conclusions through eliminating bias, uh, double-blind experiments, sample sizing and placebos, um, positive, negative, and no correlation. These are all things that will come out in the data analysis and interpretation. This practice question says, which of the following scenarios best exemplifies deductive reasoning? A, a scientist concludes that a plant species is drought resistant after watching it survive a hot summer. Uh, after a boy observes, B, after a boy observes where the sun rises, he tells his mom that the sun will rise in the east in the morning. Choice C, since it is well established that noble gases are stable, scientists can safely say that the noble gas neon is stable. Choice D, a scientific transportation department decides to use sodium road salt after studies show that calcium road salt is ineffective. So which of the following scenarios best exemplifies deductive reasoning here? Take a second and see if you can answer that question. So the correct answer is C in this case. Since it is well established that noble gases are stable, scientists can safely say that the noble gas uh, neon is stable. Uh, so the choice is C, and it's because deductive reasoning involves drawing scientific conclusions uh, from general principles or premises. So in this particular scenario for choice C, uh, the stability of noble gas is a general principle. Um, and the conclusion about neon stability logically flows from it. All right, so hopefully you guys got that question right. If you didn't, if you have questions on it, leave a comment below. And that wraps up this video, so make sure to check out the links in the description. Get that free practice test, get the online course, and join that study group. Those are all the best possible things that you can do for yourself to give yourself the best chance of passing the test. And check out the rest of our videos on the channel. Subscribe to the channel so you get notifications on all the new videos coming out here shortly. And we'll see you after you pass the test.